Hello, everyone. We'll get started in just a minute as others join. Thank you. Well, it looks like we have a decent sized quorum, so we'll go ahead and get started. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining the session today. Uh, my name is Justin Willis. I'm a director at SPEAR-MC, uh, leading our managed services team, and I'm based out of the Denver office. I'll be serving as today's MC. Um, I'll take care of some housekeeping items uh, now in, in the initial slides. Um, we will, uh, I'll, I'll be monitoring the chat and questions uh, during the session that you put in. Um, so feel free to put those in. We'll also have plenty of time towards the end of the presentation to address any uh, questions or uh, walk through any items you'd like to. Uh, we also have a couple of uh, handouts attached to the webinar, so feel free to pick those up now or you can wait until you receive uh, a recording of this session uh, after uh, or later on today. Um, so the recorded session along with the attachments um, and a, a few of the links that you're going to see today will also be attached to that email as well. In a few minutes, we'll be administering a real-time polling session uh, to help understand all of you a little bit better in, uh, in the infrastructure and, and uh, current versions you're on with PeopleSoft. Um, if you have any issue with submitting your answer, um, you might try going out of full screen. I think so, sometimes uh, folks, depending on their uh, current OS version, uh, may have an issue there. So we'll go ahead and, and jump right into the deck. So uh, our intended audience, uh, of course, hopefully you are all well, well versed, seasoned uh, PeopleSoft experts, um, and uh, and so that's that's who we're targeting the the conversation to today. Um, designed for all PeopleSoft users, uh, functional and technical. Obviously, um, with unified navigation, it. Uh, it requires some technical um, uh, expertise to, to set this up and get this running. So uh, relative for all you technical folks, um, but also a, a real selling point for all the function, functional people as, uh, as you get this up and running. And uh, so for today's focus, um, we are gonna focus on HCM and, and financials. Uh, this also is relative to other applications for PeopleSoft. Um, so we're, we're certainly not saying uh, that it's that those aren't relative, but we'll just stick for the conversation uh, to HCM and financials for today's discussion. Uh, the, there is unified navigation training that SpearMC offers. Uh, there's actually going to be a four-hour session uh, scheduled in July, so uh, more to follow on that. And we'll also cover some uh, training points as we as we go through uh, the, the initial slides and then the the, uh, the closing. So some webinar logistics, um, as I mentioned, there's some attachments um, out there. So you'll see uh, see those out there. Um, I was just going by the picture here, but the uh, you are all in audience uh, uh, mode or uh, um, mute mode uh, for the for the session. So we'll we'll capture all your questions in chat um, in in order to communicate that. Um, as I mentioned, I'll be I'll be monitoring the questions in chat. Uh, this webinar is being recorded and real-time polling I had already mentioned. Hey, Justin, uh, speaking of monitoring questions, uh, I actually got one from uh, someone out there saying that she's actually unable to hear any sound. Just want to do a sound check. If anybody in the chat window or questions can let us know if you're able to hear us. Uh, if it's a isolated issue with the one user or if any of you, I suppose if you can't hear me, you can't even answer this question now that I think about it. That's sound, uh, yep, it's all firm. Okay. Uh, like, yeah. Thank you, that, uh, <laughs> all right, <Yep. laughs> all right, you, you've all nailed it. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Good point. So, uh -huh. um, 
probably a speaker issue, I suppose, for the individual who was having problems. Justin, sorry yeah. about that. Thank yeah. you all. No, no need to uh, continue to send your responses. We've got it. Good. Thanks, Randy. A valid uh, uh, intrusion there. Um, so going on to the next slide. So uh, for those of you that don't uh, know SpearMC, SpearMC has been uh, in the business of PeopleSoft and supporting customers on PeopleSoft uh, since 2004. Um, and what's listed here is our, our primary um, um, selling points and in, in, in areas of expertise that we uh, assist with, uh, with our customers. Um, and on the left here, it's, it's certainly more focused on PeopleSoft, which is our niche. Um, we are considered to be one of the the, the most uh, effective and, and successful PeopleSoft um, consulting agencies uh, in, in the world, actually. So um, you'll see a lot of PeopleSoft in there. Um, on the right-hand side, there's some PeopleSoft as it's relative to um, reseller and, and um, uh, PTF and test automation, but you also see some Oracle products in there, um, obviously Hyperion, business intelligence, and further managed services as well. So uh, pretty much all things uh, PeopleSoft, we, we do dabble a little bit in um, some Oracle product, uh, products such as OCI um, and, and uh, items like that as shown at the bottom um, and cloud EPM, but uh, our real bread and butter is uh, all things PeopleSoft. We are uh, spread out throughout the United States for our offices. Um, despite just having offices in the United States, we actually do uh, a business. We have customers abroad throughout the throughout the world. Um, I am out of the Denver office. Uh, Randy is out of the Chicago office. Um, we actually got our start back in 2004 in the San Francisco office. Uh, so we're we're well distributed throughout the country, um, which really helps facilitate, um, you know, keeping in tune and in line with our customers' needs. From your, uh, this screen, you can see the, the presenter for today is Randy Johnson. Um, he's uh, my esteemed colleague out of the Chicago office. And I, once again, I am Justin Willis, uh, director out of the Denver office. We have a number of uh, uh, training sessions coming up. Um, I would really encourage all of you to go on the Spear MC site. Um, we update that on a daily basis with new training sessions. Um, these are a variety of training sessions uh, like the one you're attending today, but then uh, we have also uh, paid training, um, all types of things in there. So really important um, to, to go out there and take a look at uh, all the training we provide, both free and paid training. Um, for instance, one, uh, one I'd like to point out, the third from the bottom is lease admin. Uh, we've had a lot of interest in that uh, session, so um, that one's scheduled. Uh, from June 29th through July 1st. So um, a lot of traction on that one, but that's just one of many uh, training sessions that uh, we've got a lot of positive uh, uh, feedback on as far as uh, prior sessions, as well as demand, right? So uh, you'll, see, you'll see a lot of the things that uh, uh, most companies are, are eager to learn more about represented in our training uh, list. So I'd strongly encourage you to go out there uh, after this call, but then um, go out there occasionally to, to see what else um, SpearMC is providing. So really, really great uh, resources out there for you guys um, in the PeopleSoft community. And that the, uh, the link shown here will be provided uh, along with the recording after this session. So as I mentioned, we're going to have a, a poll. Uh, I will um, shoot up some questions here one at a time. And we'll uh, we'll see you know uh, what uh, demographics we have represented on the phone today. And while Justin's launching, I, uh, we've got it launched. I wanted to I just wanted to remind uh, everyone that that our focus is primarily first and foremost. We believe that everyone on the call has multiple uh, platforms of PeopleSoft. It, it makes sense that you would join this session um, for uh, unified navigation um, only if you had more than one. Um, our focus is gonna be between HCM and financials. 
Um, and so we're asking our questions specific to HCM and financial. So our apologies if you uh, only have HCM and let's say campus solutions, uh, our, our questions and our focus today is going to be unifying uh, financials and HCM. So with that said, here's the first question, Justin. Yep. Looks like we, we have on responses? Uh, a good representation of votes. Um, I'll give it a few more seconds for those of you um, who are still answering this question. And we have a total of four questions we'll ask you. And I'll be uh, displaying those results. Looks like we still have a, a trickling of, of answers coming up. Um, I'll give it five more seconds. OK. So here's uh, from the first question, um, your version looks like uh, a lion's share of the folks on the on the call are, are currently on 856, uh, which isn't uh, necessarily bad news. Obviously, 856 just got extended for support. So uh, good news there. So um, of course, we got the folks that are on 855 and lower um, being out of support, but uh, good to know that a majority of you are, are on a supported platforms. Yeah, Justin, 75 percent are uh, are supported, 76, I guess, and and uh, that's that's really good to see. Right. Okay, this now we're repetitive. <laughs> Was that Randy? I said that now we're going to feel repetitive here, and 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 really the the bottom line is you can be on HCM and and financials and be on two different tools versions, right? So uh, we felt the need to uh, to ask the question per pillar. Um, hopefully that that doesn't uh, surprise folks on the call. Yeah, we're looking Pretty forward to seeing, and and, and unfortunately our. Our polling isn't intelligent enough to track your organization and tell us if uh, if you have two different versions. <laughs> so just uh, suffice it to say that we'll, uh, we'll we'll compile the results and let you know um, if if you're a candidate for all of the emerging technologies that that we're discussing over the course of our webinars. Anyway, I think I've filled enough time. Justin, how how are we doing on responses? We're good. I'll, I'll close it out. I'll just make a comment. Yeah, obviously for for all the ex experts out there, knowing that um, it is fairly common to be on different tools versions for HCM and Fin. Um, and one of the things we'll we'll reference today is integration broker. And as you you all know, it's not required to be on the same tools version um, to take advantage of what we're going to be presenting today. So, um, okay, I'll go ahead and close that one out and share the results. Uh, once again, 856 uh, etches out. Looks like there's a pretty even um, distribution here between HCM and FIN. Um, so I, I would imagine most people, I guess, are on relatively the same tools versions for the two applications. Yeah, been. only observation I might make is it, 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 it's potentially possible that uh, those of you that, that are on um, a later version appear to be on the later version for HCM. Maybe financials is, is trailing in your people tools updates, but uh, still almost 75% are, are in the uh, current versions. Right. Not bad to well, see. Right, right, yep. Okay, now it's uh, uh, PUM, PUM images for both. So we'll start with HCM. And I'll give it just a few more seconds so we can uh, wrap up the, the polling. We have one more question after this relative to financials. Still getting answers coming in, Randy. Um, okay. So I'll give it a few more seconds than I anticipated. I want to make sure we, we capture um, everyone's answers. Okay. I'll go ahead and close that out. So, looks like people are a little bit, I would, I would say a little bit uh, more current on their tools version 
um, which is important, right? When you talk about support, um, then uh, then their images, um, but uh, almost 40% are are 30 and above, so that's that's good news. Certainly good news. I think uh, image, if I'm not mistaken, image 34, the most recent image came out uh, about a week ago, and so. I'm interested if uh, if folks are actually on 34, if you were surprised to see that we ended it at 34 for HCM. Um, but uh, but but within 30 to 34, almost 40%, that's fantastic. Yeah. Okay, and then uh, one more here, last question. Give a few more seconds here and close this one out. All right. Okay, so financials is doing a little bit better, it would appear. Um, that's that's interesting. Uh, I think yeah, I, th I think that is typically a. Uh, a priority for folks, um, you know, with, with HCM, you you get your tax updates and things like that outside of your your images. So um, with financials, uh, certainly there's a, a lot of benefits on each application, but uh, I, I have seen probably more interested uh, uh, customers on on financials and in, in keeping current. So um, mostly in line. Any comments there, Randy? Uh, the, a little surprised that that the folks that are slightly further behind on people tools are slightly further ahead on the images. Uh, suppose that's just fine. Um, interesting to see where uh, where people put their focus in staying current. But uh, I suppose the folks that are joining these types of webinars are, are going to be in the forefront of staying current. And, and it is certainly a best practice that we highly recommend. Um, so great to see. Thank you for participating in the polling questions. I know uh, some of you might have had a few issues. Uh, again, we, we know that there are issues in the full screen mode. Hopefully it was not too frustrating for you to, uh, uh, to, to participate. Um, thank you. All right. Now moving on. The agenda. The rest of the agenda is uh, what you're here to talk about is unified navigation. I'll explain why that poll was was so important particularly on the people tools side uh, when we get into the overview um, i want to touch on use cases why would you why would you think about doing unified navigation um, i'm going to step you through the unified navigation setup steps but i i want to point you to the handouts there were two one is a detail from from oracle uh, a detailed step-by-step node configuration guide uh, that, that could be very, very useful. Um, it's more on the technical side and I am not on the technical side. And so uh, that that hopefully can fill any technical gaps that you might have. Uh, but I'll, but I'll, st I'll show you the, uh, the actual steps in the sequence um, using one of the tools that Oracle's de delivered recently. Um, and then we'll have some time for questions and answers. Uh, Justin's going to be monitoring the question window, and I'm not uh, I'm I'm not inclined to wait till the end to have you ask your questions. I'd like you to shout them out to Justin in that question window uh, whenever they pop up, whenever you're whenever they come to mind, and uh, and Justin has full authority to interrupt me, cut me <laughs> off, and uh, and ask the questions. Um, if your question is of, of a technical nature, I will more than likely defer and need to do the research with our technical team and post the response uh, to the recorded session. Um, the response will be in writing in the questions and answers section. Um, but if it's a functional and easy softball type question, I'll, I'll be able to answer, Justin will be able to answer real time, all right? Promise me you'll keep those questions coming. All right, let's move in. So unified navigation overview. All right, 
what what is unified navigation this is straight from people books federated multiple people act people soft applications in a cluster wow i think you you probably get it by the term right fluid navigation all in one unified spot um technically it dates back to uh, breadcrumb navigation all in one nice little spot um i think most of you know breadcrumbs are considered customization by the time you get to tools 856 so really the focus and i'm not even going to deal or talk about anything pre people tools 856 uh we're talking about the fluid version of unified navigation okay um i'll touch on that in a second okay so pre people tools i don't know why it came backwards pre people tools 856 everything that was connected your your uh, modules your your uh, environments right it was connected through the interaction hub the interaction hub required a separate user license um you had to buy interaction hub and, and many organizations did buy the interaction hub but if you recall back in the you know seven five eight 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 five eight four eight three whatever hcm and financials eight nine days uh we didn't have fluid we didn't have home pages uh, the way that we do today and so you if you needed to have a centralized portal you had to build it you had to build it as a web page an employee portal or 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 whatever you determined was the uh the central um hub you had to build it and it required that web development skills and you needed to maintain the web development um as you upgraded as you maintained your PeopleSoft systems. Uh, each of the pillars then would then integrate through and into the interaction hub and the interaction hub would then direct the traffic anytime there was unified navigation uh, that was required, okay? That was pre-PeopleSoft, PeopleTools 856. So interaction hub was, uh, it's actually an application. It ended in version 9.1. Once we get to People Tools 856, unified navigation is enabled via your license. You have it, you own it. And once you get to 856, you do not need to license the interaction hub. Through People Tools and through the setup, the last section of my presentation, uh, the most boring section of my presentation, you will see how you can connect your, your uh, applications your instances um, without going through an interaction hub um, essentially what happens is you have a home page you, you pick one of the portals to be the, uh, the 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 main portal and everything is federated through a uh, a local or a remote portal right whichever one you pick so let's just say you pick your your fscm environment to be the the uh, host portal, then technically what happens is the other environments, the other instances are considered remote, uh, but they're but they're all linked. So you have you have one that that is the uh, is is the uh, main and and the others that are treated as if they're they're uh, remote. Okay, now what this means is you don't have to have a custom web development custom web page as your portal you can use delivered people soft home pages uh fluid home pages or if you've built that centralized web portal you can still use that that's that's perfectly acceptable okay um but those folks that that chose not to implement uh unified navigation in the past may have done so because it, it was too difficult to build that 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 web portal okay um and and that's why i we've labeled this as emerging technologies and it's kind of funny because it's it's not it it's been around for a really long time um, you've been able to do unified navigation if you owned that interaction hub uh, for for a very long time so the, technically what makes this uh, emerging technologies is the advent of uh, Fluid as a homepage that 
requires no development, um, as well as the uh, the now with 856, the ability to do this through people tools without the license for Interaction Hub. All right. Uh, let's see. Yeah, yeah. So any one of the the systems that you have, and again, our example is between FSCM and ACM, can be designated as the uh, as as the portal system within the cluster. So the main local portal system and within the cluster, um, the others would, would be considered remote. All right, I know, boring, gosh. What are some use cases? I firmly believe in these use cases. Simplified user experience, both from a casual PeopleSoft user and from a manager's perspective, okay? Um, you're gonna see single sign-on authentication is happening everywhere, if it hasn't happened in your organization already. It is one of the requirements. There is an ability to, to set up what's known as PeopleSoft only single sign-on, uh, but more and more frequently, you've got other single sign-on uh, valid user validations that are out there. Um, a part of the, the unified navigation setup includes single sign-on setup. You'll see that here shortly. Um, and so it, it, not, that, not that you are uh, unique out there if, if you've already done single sign-on, but it, it, it is something that you're definitely gonna wanna consider. And it seems logical, I hope, that if you're going to unify your navigation, you need to unify the uh, user ID and, and password structure so that you can pass from one uh, instance to another, from one pillar to another. Um, we, we then, once, once we've, we've configured, we can synchronize our user data. Um, and that, of course, it includes security access, but it also includes user preferences, um, your favorites, and uh, your your uh, your your portals and your pagelets that you've you've perhaps taken and added to your homepage. Your dashboards and your simplified analytics will flow uh, from one to the to the other pillar. Um, as as long as we've got our, in, we would do this synchronized user preferences and user data. Okay, um, there's another key that I believe really important, and that is uh, content references and resources. Right, so content references. That there's a lot there. Right, what are we talking about? Well, we're talking about getting to uh, work centers and uh, your your uh, dashboards. No matter where you've logged on, you've got a centralized homepage. These are consistent across the platform, okay? And creating related content services. So I, I don't know how many of you have uh, gotten into related content services um, and, and uh, embedded analytics within pagelets. But what this will allow you to do is within a page, you can have related related activity, let's just suggest that you're an employee that has the expenses module and you're in expenses, but if, if you if you want to build cross application related content, you could have some sort of analytic that shows the employee how much uh, how much time they have left in their leave balance, for example, uh, while they're in the financials data. Uh, because that employee information is unique, is unique and is consistent across both applications. Okay, uh, so those are some some use cases for deploying unified navigation. Um, in my opinion, the first one is the most important, and it's where I'm spending a good chunk of the uh, the presentation. That simplified user experience. Okay, so. Let's take a look. What would unified navigation look like in an environment that has both FSCM and financials? Okay, well, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a user who comes on to PeopleSoft with some regularity. Um, I go and my, my landing homepage is the employee self-service portal, okay? Now what we see here on the employee self-service portal 
are some financials tiles. Okay, I can go into e-procurement for requisitions. I can go into expenses to create and, and review my and submit my expense reports. Um, or I could I could place some service field requests if if uh, if if I'm uh, uh, buying service procurement. Okay. I also have HCM applications. So my company directory, my my time and labor for time entry, uh, payroll, open enrollment. If the open enrollment period is open, unfortunately my screenshot we uh, we did not have open enrollment open, uh, but Right now, I can see I don't have any enrollment activities that are available at this time. Uh, talent management benefits details, you see the HCM de details here. And then my personal details primarily comes from HCM, but I've got a blue rectangle around here because there are, there are user preferences um, under your personal details that, that can be specific to the financials applications as well. So that, that really crosses both. Okay, pause. Justin, any questions yet? Uh, there's just one comment on the uh, the interaction hub. Um, it, it's not completely ended, but rather um, no longer being enhanced. Uh, so, it, but it is supported, um, and and that's it for right now, Gary. All right, sorry, Randy. Yep. Okay. Great. Thanks for that. Keep those questions coming. That's your part. Okay. Audience, that's your. We'll We've got 71 folks out there interested in this, so surely yeah. you must have some questions brewing in your minds. <laughs> so, uh, user experience. The the I want to point out a few things. Actually, I should have highlighted something different too. Uh, my preferences, right? So I'm I'm on I'm on my preferences. What I can see is I've got uh, I've got common preferences. The general. This was supposed to be the first one that that popped up general settings and notifications okay this is across the platform um on my uh, approval workflow engine awe so workflow what are my preferences if i don't like getting bombarded with emails i can turn my email notification off this this would be federated across financials and hcm okay um Something that I, I wish I would have highlighted: text message. I don't know how many of you are aware that uh, that there is a text message feature that is available now that can uh, that that will allow you to uh, enter your your mobile number to receive your notifications uh, via text message. And of course, the notification window, this this little guy that would pop up with a little a number of of notifications that are out there. Um, and sorry, the uh, the last one that is HCM. So we've got financials, user preferences, HCM, user preferences, and really cross-platform user preferences that will be uh, unified, federated across all uh, all instances. Pause. I think I saw a few questions. Yeah, in. We, we do. We do have some coming in. Randy, um, the first one is: Can you bring in content from non-PeopleSoft, perhaps data from external databases? So non-PeopleSoft application data. Um, <clears throat> I think so, but right. I have not tried it. <laughs> okay. Um, I, 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 so that that is a question we'll answer uh, at some point in the uh, in the Q and A section when we uh, when we post it. Okay. Apologize, we'll have to get back to you on that one. That's okay. Um, we'll table that. And the next question is, when you say across platform, are you referring to those general settings between? Uh, yes. FS and <clears throat> yeah, so, so these general settings and your notifications, I'm showing, this screen shows the notifications, right? So general settings are um, whether you want the autofill when you type, right? And uh, uh, other, other, I, I, I don't have a live uh, environment up right now. Um, other general settings. That's going to, that's going to be federated so that each, well, when you log on with, with Unified Navigation, ultimately you'll have one log on, and it will apply to every one of the, uh, of the applications and, and environments and pillars that you have running. And so these general settings, like. Uh, uh, I think uh, accessibility is out there, right? 
those will be federated and and, and uh, they will they will be included no matter where you go in within the PeopleSoft uh, platforms. Okay, and lastly, I, I think it, through the uh, Q and A window, I think it, it's been answered. But uh, the question was: Is this text message service to a third party, or is it uh, delivered with PeopleSoft? Uh, the integration to a third party is delivered with PeopleSoft. The third party is Twilio. Um, <clears throat> that that integration has been there for the expenses module. If you if you have that on the financial side to uh, send text messages, images of your receipts so that they sit in your wallet to be applied. Uh, and now it's been extended for uh, for uh, text message outbound notification. Um, we we frankly have not uh, tested this yet. We're that that's next on the list. Okay, and uh, no more questions, but um, to circle back with the uh, external content outside of PeopleSoft uh, being uh, accessible here, uh, that is possible um, uh, per Matthew, and uh, and you can bring in external data either as a tile or as related content. Fantastic. Uh, Ma Matthew, uh, Havisto is on from Oracle, I believe. That's the Matthew you're referring to. And so yes. thank you, Matthew, for joining and for uh, providing that uh, very relevant response. Uh, okay, so we saw tiles, right? We saw a homepage that had tiles that represented all of the, uh, well, the pillars that were either all or HCM or financial specific. and here we see the same with the uh, nav bar navigation, okay? I, I mentioned breadcrumbs, let's just get off it, get over it, be a benevolent dictator, they're, down, they're dead, just get over it. We're using the nav bar or we're using tiles, okay? Let's just all agree. With the nav bar, you get a choice of how you want your unified navigation to appear. So in, in our particular configuration, we decided we wanted a uh, we wanted a, a folder for HCM Unified Navigation. Um, I am logged on, and the uh, the host portal is in our world, I believe, the FSCM portal. So I'm logged on to financials. So I see the HCM Unified Nav is the option for me to click on, and when I do, then I can see all of my HCM navigations. Okay. Um, what I see in employee self-service and manager self-service is what I would see on the tiles, unified there. Then we see the actual specific, because again, I'm logged on on financials, we see the financials uh, menu structure below that. You can choose, instead of segregating HCM, and if we log on to HCM, we'd see a, uh, FSCM unified nav uh, folder, you can choose to put everything at the root and everything, HCM and financials, would be displayed all based on the root. Um, it's, it's a setting, it's, it's an option for you. Um, <laughs> frankly, we, we did it this way because we all log on with user IDs that have so many menu items, it, it got, it got a, a little onerous, right? The VP1-like menu options. Um, it, it got onerous for everything HCM and financials to be all in one big long list, uh, but but entirely uh, up to you on what you want to do. I sh what I should have done is I should have highlighted these uh, my favorites in blue because my favorites these get federated uh, across whatever you set up as a my favorite in in whatever or whatever portal you're on gets federated across all uh, all portals remote or local. Okay, so that would be a blue box right here. Um, a blue box here would be the approvals. I'll see in the manager section of the presentation that uh, we would, and this is, I think, a, a really big selling point, um, all of your approvals tidied up and put in one, one list instead of having to go into the HCM to do your HCM approvals and financials to do your financials approvals. So uh, if I had drawn boxes around our, our uh, outer icons here, I would have drawn a blue box around my approvals and around my, uh, my favorites. All right? 
Okay, the manager experience. Let's see if my links work, it clicks work this time. Okay, so here we've got HCM, <laughs> we've got an expenses work center. So one of the keys, right, is is federating the work center. It's technically not a, uh, I guess it, it becomes a menu item when you publish it, right? But it's not in the traditional menu structure. You can put the expenses work center on any part of your uh, of your menu structure. Um, so work centers can be applied as tiles and are treated as unified objects. Um, I've got my time and labor work center and my expenses work center. So financials, HCM, and then my uh, combined. Okay, company director technically probably is red, uh, but uh, but but we see that as federated easily across both financials and ACM. Uh, and then, as I mentioned previously, the the combined approvals tile. Okay, so manager experience. We believe managers will really appreciate the uh, ability to to log on once. Uh, or or be logged on with single sign-on and see everything that they need to address all on one particular homepage. Um, and Great. so as an example, yep. Uh, just one question real quick uh, as you're switching slides here. Um, the question is, um, uh, is it only fluid approvals that appear in approval tile? Yes. Okay. Okay, so it's limited to fluid approvals so only. So I thought that question might come up, and and I, about an hour before the presentation, decided I should take try to take a look at the work list and see if that was federated, um, and it wasn't. So uh, we we may have missed something, but but we have started to ignore work lists and old workflow, and we are really embracing the fluid approval tile um, as as the main mechanism for doing workflow approvals. Okay, so <clears throat> this is this is just what it, it might look like if you're a user. Betty Lockerty in, in our demo environment has a, a, a pretty big role and gets a lot of uh, workflow approvals routed her way. Um, so uh, I, I pulled her up because she has a role in HCM as an approver as well as on financials. Um, and so here is, is how it might look in your organization if you know about the a fluid approval page composer, not the page and field configurator or the, uh, or, or the page and approval builder, but the page composer, which is where you design your, uh, the look and feel of, of your fluid approval pages. Um, you can you can choose how these are going to be displayed if you have different sorts. Right now, it's just by type, um, but but there are many different options. And, and I honestly I could see a, a day where where one of the view by would be uh, the pillar that it came from, HCM or financials. That that doesn't exist yet, but but that can be built with configuration on your part. So again, a key we believe driving factor. For the user experience, is uh, is a single approval tile for uh, for all approvals for managers. Oh, now I'm going to try a light demo. So uh, give me just a second to. I have to get out of the presentation mode, and I have to try to move my. Um, let's see. I'm going to try to move my. Login here. Justin, if you'd be so kind as to let me know if I'm displaying properly. You are. Okay. So let's see which one is this. This is uh, my financials environment. And I'm also going to put out there my logon for our HCM environment. Okay. So this is HCM. This is financials. Again, one is going to be your uh, your host portal. The other will be a uh, a remote portal. But it's it's irrelevant once we once we get unified navigation working. Um, I'm going to log on as myself, R Johnson. I am going to sign in again. I'm in the financials environment. Fingers crossed. We're connected. Um, and and what I'm going to 
try to do here is I'm going to, oh, I'm in, I think that's okay. Manage yourself, sir. It doesn't matter which homepage I'm, I'm on. I'm going to, um, I'm going to personalize my homepage and I'm going to do so in a shameless plug for another webinar that we have later this afternoon where Cameron McClurg is going to be talking to you about chatbots. Um, so uh, I have not on my user yet added chatbots to my uh, manager self-service homepage, so I'm going to do that. Um, and let's see. I, I know there are there's three that we have. Absence, gosh, my absence assistant. That's a chatbot. Now the absence assistant is an HCM chatbot, but I'm logged on to financial. So as you can see, those tiles are federated. I can add them. I'm in my portal. I now have my absence assistant. I'm just gonna move absence assistant up just so it shows up at the top of my uh, uh, top of my page here. Okay, and we'll save it. We'll save it. And now my absence assistant, which again, HCM chatbot is on my homepage. Let's, let's just prove it. I'm gonna log out. I'm gonna log into HCM, okay? You won't have to do this, but I'm doing it as an example to show you that it's federated across the two platforms. Uh, oh, again, fingers crossed. Oh, wonderful. Looky, it, it it's, looks the same, doesn't it? I'm I'm relieved. Hopefully, you are impressed. Let's let's do one more. I'm going to add one more. Uh, I know it's the same same thing but i promised cameron i would pitch his chatbot presentation which i'm frankly very much looking forward to the requester chatbot so this would be uh, uh e-procurement requisition requester chatbot i'm going to add that to my home page again i'm going to i'm going to put it up to the top so we can see it uh so we can see it nice and nice and early real good let me move this down now my two bots are there, I'm gonna save. Now I've got my requester bot and my absence bot are both out there. Um, and that was in the HCM environment. I know it's a lot of logging off and logging on and that's obnoxious, but I'm almost there. This is just to prove to you, now that it's there, it's there. Okay. Um, I do hope you attend Cameron's chatbot. I was I was tempted to actually click on it and ruin his uh, steal his thunder, but no, no. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna move on to my presentation. So um, I know I said light demonstration. Um, if you want to see what the I should have pointed this out. The navigation looks like um, it, uh, HCM Unified. This is my attempt for a work list that failed. Uh, HCM Unified Navigation. As you can see, my uh, home portal is financials. I see all my financials menus. If I want to see HCM, I click on that uh, and I see my HCM menu options. Okay. Um, we, we see FSCM Unified Nav here. You don't need to do that. You could just go back and do that. Uh, but you would see that if the portal you logged on as your initial portal was HCM, you'd, you'd see this in, in lieu of the HCM. Unified navigation, boom. Okay, back to the presentation and, and I'm really running out of time. I told you the boring part was coming. Um, it really is. And so I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to breeze through that. What are the steps to setting up unified navigation? Well, uh, Justin alluded to it. it. It works with integration broker an integration broker node set up, right? You do need to have single sign-on configured. Um, the node configuration, the integration broker, these are detailed in that second attachment that are part of the handouts section. Um, you'll get that either now if you want to download them on the attachment section, or if you want to wait, they'll be available when the recording link is sent to you. Uh, but, but this is the technical stuff. Here's what's cool. There's actually a new role. This is the financials uh, image 35 environment on 858. 
called configuration specialist. And under configuration specialist, there's a, a fluid nav collection for configure, configure unified navigation. And that will step you through step by step. Now, there's a ton of technical decisions you have to make that even though they're stepped out for you, there's there's a lot of technical uh, solutioning that, that you have to do. We found that to get a prototype up and running in our environment took about two weeks. Um, and you're going to see my offer to you. We can come to you and do it in half that time. We can get your navigation, your unified navigation up and running in, in one week. Uh, okay, so as you can see, step through, boom, we uh, we see the status. And uh, of course, in ours, everything has this beautiful green little check mark. The first time you go into this, there's going to be red reg X's. And that means you've got to address each one of those steps along the way. Okay. Um, in addition to these, there's some 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 additional work that you need to do. Um, and I suspect that the, uh, the, the service configurations and the uh, the, the setups down here in, in Unified Navigation is where you would have your external system that uh, Matthew so kindly responded to. Um, lots of detail. You, you do, this is, this is single sign-on connection. Uh, many of you might already have single sign-on working. Um, again, there's a PeopleSoft only option if you don't have a single sign-on provider. Um, so I highly recommend that you uh, determine ent entity-wide, enterprise-wide, what your strategy is. If you already have one aligned, it's a matter of just getting that configured. Uh, this may already be configured within your PeopleSoft environment. Um, trusted nodes. So as you can see, we do have two different people tools releases. Now, we're not that far off between uh, our, our financials application and HCM. But this is where if you had CRM or if you had uh, Campus Solutions um, or, or ELM still, you would be adding those and uh, adding these as trusted locations and nodes. Um, Unified Navigation Network, this was ours. You, you test your single sign-on. This is where you wanna make sure you're uh, syncing your user personalizations, okay? Uh, and your user system profile. Let's see what else. I know I'm trying to go fast. Uh, oh, so now the drop down menu. Remember what I said about uh, the folder, right? We could choose to go root, root and have all of our uh, uh, menu just flow all the way down. We chose to create, and this is, cust this is configuration, not customization. We just typed in ACM Unified Navigation here. And there's an equivalent, you have to do this same setup over on the HCM side where we said FSCM Unified Navigation. Um, and, and that folder sits at the root, but then everything within that is the details from our HCM employee portal. And we did, this is what's known as a full uh, sync. So every pagelet import, uh, you can actually specify individual pages if you want. Okay. Uh, related content, love it, right? Uh, th this, this related content, I think, is just phenomenal. It should be a part of your, your design on all pivot grids, all queries, all pagelets, all uh, simplified analytics. Um, this is where you begin to define your, your cross-content related content that, that can be displayed across all portals. I'm losing my voice. I promised a special offer. We can help you. We've learned and we've, we've, we've had some pain. We can get you, as long as you're on a People Tools 856 or higher base on both application sets, we can help you get this configured in a non-production environment in, in, less, in, in one week. I say less than one week because I'm talking about one consulting week, which is four hours. And uh, we're offering a free 40, 40 minutes. Yes, say again? You said four hours. <laughs> what did I say? Four hours, four, four days. <laughs> okay. Thank you. You are authorized to cut me off anytime mm -hmm. I overpromise and underdeliver, Justin. <laughs> okay. I appreciate that. Uh, 
here's your here's your webinar pricing you get you get a now this is for two uh two platforms if you have three or more platforms it's it's going to take just a hair longer and cost just a hair more uh, but but this is your uh, w because you are a participant in today's webinar. This would be the pricing. We get it done in a week. Uh, it's non-production. We get you the the training materials and the instructions to then continue to to uh, propagate that into additional environments. Um, and uh, we're out of your hair in in uh, three days. If you want to just understand, are you even ready? Do you have uh, an environment that that is is possible. Um, you don't want to spend this kind of money if you if you we get to the end of the week and we say it didn't work, um, and you you need from us just a, a, a readiness assessment. That one's free. That one's free. And then we got a whole bunch of services we're offering. The more you buy, the more you get a discount. Sorry for the salesiness. I do apologize. That's my wrap up. Oh no, I'm continuing to sell. I told you there's a chat bot session later today. Um, register for it. Cameron McClurg is going to be uh, doing that presentation. I believe he has some folks from Oracle. Matthew might be a panelist on that as well. Um, so you might get to hear Matthew's voice. Um, highly encourage you to go and check out chat bots, um, especially those of you that are, are on 857 or 858 already. Okay. Uh, but look, even if you're not, Attend that, and that will be your use case for updating your people tools to the to the supported levels, which is 856, as Justin mentioned, and higher. My recommendation, get to 858. I think it looks beautiful. Um, we've got, Justin mentioned, a lot of training. Shameless plug for my lease administration training. A lot of you are in the public sector. A lot of you on this call. Um, we have a SPIRMC exclusive solution that that is full GASB 87 compliance. Um, the Oracle delivered solution does not include compliance with revenue leases. So um, if you're interested in uh, implementing lease administration, this three day course is for implementation teams. By the end, you'll be uh, you'll be able to do a uh, an implementation uh, project yourselves. Um, we also have a PTF class, so this is PeopleSoft Test Framework, one of my favorite tools that uh, that has come out from PeopleSoft recently, and it gets better and better as the uh, images and, and tools are uh, are flowing through. So um, chatbots coming up. That that's the training. So we've got the uh, we've got the webinar later. This is the training scheduled for July 16th on uh, on how to do your uh, chatbots, including delivered skills and custom skills. Um, highly recommend you go out to our website. Justin called it out earlier. We've got tons of content, but if we're missing something you want, just let us know. Please let us know if there's something that you think you would like to see as a webinar like this, or you would like to see uh, four hours or more of training material uh, created. Let us know. That is uh, certainly something we're willing to to take into consideration. Um, our our PeopleSoft community is uh, is is hungry for more. All right. Are there any more questions while yeah. I was rambling on? There are some questions, and I think uh, we're we're short on time, so um, we will get those answers to you for those four individuals that have unanswered questions. Uh, Matthew from Oracle wanted to make a quick comment. Yeah, hi guys, thank you. Um, I just want, can you hear me okay? Yeah, yes, sure. Oh, okay, um, I just wanted to mention there are a couple of other areas where you can benefit or people can benefit from uh, unified navigation. And that is, uh, for example, in uh, activity guides, you know, guided processes. So for example, let's say you had onboarding or benefits enrollment or something like that. And there were steps within that activity guide from different content sources, uh, you can, you know, you can set those up so it's seamless for the person running through the process. They don't have to log out of one, log into the other, and so on. Uh, similarly, uh, with navigation collections, which are very popular, you, you mentioned uh, not having breadcrumbs anymore. A lot of customers have uh, many, many navigation collections that they've built, and uh, those can benefit also from unified navigation. Again, as you go through the process or you click on different steps within the navigation collection, uh, they can come from different content sources. And then similarly, uh, work centers. 
So you showed different work centers coming from different content, but even within the work center itself, you can have different, uh, you know, different content sources. So anyway, just wanted to let people know that. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you for, for uh, joining in. So appreciate it. And I'm kicking myself because I had already noted that in my notes that, that especially the activity guide, onboarding, for example, if you think of that, that process normally will start through the recruitment process, uh, but there are points where you will, you will need to requisition the workspace for that particular employee or uh, requisition the business cards for that, in, that particular new employee. And those functions are e-procurement in, in financials. And so nice to be able to just have that step-by-step -step guide that includes anything you do uh, without having to log off and log back on to a different platform. Love it. Great. Yeah, thank you. Thank you both. And thank you, uh, Randy and, and Matthew, for the additional uh, comments there. Uh, thanks again to all of you for joining today's session on Unified Navigation. We look forward to uh, for you to attend some future sessions we have, uh, including the chat bots later on today. Be safe, stay healthy, and enjoy the rest of your day. Bye, everyone.